Hello friends, welcome back to Susan and John Math Tube. So, these video lessons are specially prepared for the second year engineering students who are studying applied math in TU affiliated colleges. And we are in lesson number 8 and we will do two questions in complex integration and again from your past papers. And before we start, as always the four important points while you watch an educational video so point number one two three and four so let's start with lesson number eight so we have an integral a complex integral and in the two-dimensional plane there are many 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 points so they want you to integrate from 0 to 1 plus i integration means addition and there are many points uh, from 0 to 1 plus i so the path is also given you to integrate through y equal to x of course y equal to x is a line passing through the origin so you to collect all the points from 0 0 to 1 comma 1 so let's convert everything into x or everything into y anyway i prefer x so let's start with the lower limit look at this the variable of integration is z and so this is z equal to 0 and that implies the origin x equal to 0 y equal to 0 now take a look at the upper limit the upper limit is 1 plus i that means z equal to 1 plus i and that means the point 1 comma 1 okay so we can see that x varies from 0 to 1 and y varies from 0 to 1 and the path used is y equal to x and that simply means we have the x-axis and the y-axis and we have the line y equal to x and let's say this is our origin let's use yellow and this is 1 1 there are infinite number of points in between we are supposed to use all the points in this function and add all those things when you input 0 0 you get 0 plus 0 i when you input 1 1 you get 1 plus i likewise there are many many points here you put all the points and add them up that is what you mean by a complex integral anyway um, z equal to x plus i y i told that in the beginning of lesson number one so that the differential i'm just taking the differential on both sides so i end up with dz equal to dx plus i dy now y equal to x so dy equal to dx that means i can replace this dy with dx because I am trying to convert everything into the variable x. Okay, now look at this. Let's substitute. I didn't change, but I used dx plus i dy. But dy and dx are the same. So I am replacing our dy with dx and then we have something common here so something into dx and it's a complex constant so i can keep it outside and integral x square is x cubed by 3 and integral x power 1 is x square by 2 now let's substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit Okay, that's it you can use a calculator and multiply this if you want to save time otherwise you can multiply just like you multiply complex numbers okay that's it so this is the answer note now this is something very important because we'll be using this in many many places especially when we prove Cauchy's integral theorem formula etc etc so look at this mod z equal to r first of all you have to understand modulus stands for distance from the origin 
let it be one dimension let it be two dimension let it be three dimension or any dimension modulus stands for the distance from the origin for example modulus of 3 means the distance of the point 3 from the origin okay and that will be positive 3 and if you think about modulus of minus 5 that simply means what is the distance of minus 5 from the origin and that will be 5 that is why we use modulus to generate positive numbers because distance is positive so even if you input any number you get the positive output but always remember modulus of a quantity means the distance of that quantity from the origin now suppose you have modulus of z1 minus z2 or modulus of let's think about a minus b in real numbers this means the distance between a and b for example modulus of 3 minus 7 this stands for the distance between 3 and 7 that will be 4 units so even though you get minus 4 you make it positive and you write 4 units okay so basically modulus is distance function now take a look at this modulus of z equal to r z stands for the complex number x plus i y so that means you collect all the complex number and it's not one it can be any complex number so you collect all the complex numbers so that the distance from the origin will be r and what does it give you a circle i'll repeat once more modulus of z is equal to r represents a circle the reason is uh, modulus of z means modulus of x plus i y that means the distance of the complex number x plus i y from the origin is r but x plus i y is not one person there are many 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 people that satisfy that condition so when you collect all those points you get a circle okay so that's a circle with center origin and radius r now you might have learned the parametric form of a circle is r cos theta r sin theta and if this is x and this is y then this can be written as e to the power i theta multiplied by r because e to the power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta so the complex number will be r cos theta plus i r sin theta or this is a modulus argument form so what i am trying to convince you here is if you ever see mod z equal to r, z equal to r into e power i theta. Okay, so another question. Evaluate integral over c log z d z where c is the circle with radius 1 unit. So, as I told you, this implies z equal to 1 into e power i theta. I'll repeat this set represents many 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 points which satisfy the condition distance from the origin equal to one so basically we get a circle but every point on the circle will be in the form one into cos theta plus i sine theta and that is why we are able to write this okay and now let's take the differential because we want d set and that will be e power i theta into i d theta. I am sure you are okay with this. And one more thing. Since this is a circle. The parameter theta will vary from 0 to 2 pi. Look at this. If you want to generate all the points on the circle. You have to substitute theta equal to 0. To 90. To 180. To 270. To 360. So, let's start integration. So, integral over C log Z D Z and that will be, okay, instead of Z I can set E power I theta and instead of D Z we can put I E power I theta D theta. So, this is a complex constant which goes outside and I into I that will be I square and I square is minus 1. Now let's um, 
use product rule or Bernoulli's rule and I'll write I L A T E so we have an algebraic function and the exponential function so the order is good so let's start integrating so look at this first function integral of second minus derivative of the first and you're integrating this once more I'm applying Bernoulli's rule and let's substitute these values okay now look at this e power i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta okay so e to the power i into 2 pi that is cos 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi and you can use a calculator or if you know the values that's good anyway substitute the values I put upper limit and the lower limit and use the fact I square is minus 1 so that becomes plus and e power 0 is 1 okay that's it so 2 pi i okay so that's it so this is how we integrate uh, in the complex plane and uh, don't stop with these two problems you have to work out a lot of questions take your past paper question past papers and try to work out maximum questions based on these I'll be back with something very important a proof Cauchy's integral theorem and then Cauchy's integral formula and later on we'll do problems based on these so as always if you find the video useful like share and subscribe and if you have any doubts please feel free to ask so i'll be back till then bye